The Department of Homeland Security reporting 116 Chinese nationals over the weekend in what's being described as a rare move. Uh, so as these illegal immigrants are being removed, believe it or not, there's this new CNN SSRS poll that finds less than a third of voters would prefer President Biden over Trump to handle the issue of immigration. I want to bring in North Dakota Senator Kevin Kramer. He's a member of the Senate Armed Services, Veterans Affairs, Banking, Environment, and Public Affairs Committees. You are a busy senator, sir, and it's great to have you here ahead of the holiday. <laughs> nice to see you. Uh, so first, your reaction that we are seeing now some deportation of these Chinese nationals, as we've seen reports that thousands have been crossing the southern border. Yeah, sure. Well, it's, it's about time, obviously. And of course, this it's four months till the presidential election. And that's what's motivating the Biden administration. I guess, OK, thanks. Politics actually works in a self-governed country. The problem is the surge happened because of a lack of cooperation between the Biden administration and the Chinese Communist Party and the Chinese government back in 2022. So that's why we've seen the surge. In fact, in 2023, the, there were 10 times more uh, Chinese illegal immigrants uh, that were that were confronted than in the previous year. So, so we're talking about a really big surge that's finally being um, at least addressed to some degree. They announced in May, the two countries, uh, a, resum a resumption of this cooperation to transport illegal uh, Chinese back to China. But remember that anybody that comes here from China who's a Chinese um, citizen, what, regardless of what their intentions are, what their motives are, frankly, where their heart or mind is as it relates to the United States, they're legally obligated by their own country to be our enemy. To, and, and we have seen even legal Chinese immigrants in the country taking pictures of sensitive military sites, trying to, you know, trying to gain access to very sensitive sites, and then they claim that they're just lost. You know, we had this in North Dakota for crying out loud at the Minot Air Force Base where we have um, nuclear war heads on ICBM missiles, they they found a, a Chinese uh, citizen taking photos of these sensitive sites, and he just claimed to be a lost, um, you know, a, a lost tourist. And it's hard to mistake the Minot Air Force Base in North Dakota for Disney World, just so you know. It's, <laughs> Yeah. It's, it's pretty Im implausible. Understood. Uh, yeah. You know, and also, too, you know, the southern border, the, the issue that's happening there, it kind of compounds on what we're seeing on the world stage. And, and I want to bring up something here that, you know, we, we've talked a lot about President Biden, the debate performance. Obviously, his cognitive ability is being heavily questioned. Uh, he is going to be meeting, by the way, with Democrat governors at the White House today. We have two House Democrats. Jared Gold and Lloyd Doggett, they're the first two members of Congress saying that he needs to not run. Uh, and then also there's now Reuters is saying 25 Democratic members of the House are preparing to call for him to step aside if he seems shaky in the coming days. I'm asking you this because we have to remember President Biden is going to be heading over to NATO. OK, NATO is next week. And there is a report this morning in The New York Post about and it's been reported in a couple of other places about his his condition when he was at the G7 and the reporting. And I want to bring this to your attention and ask you about our position on the world stage. Biden's condition shocked allies at the G7 summit. One saying, quote, it's the worst he has ever been. NATO's next week. Are you worried about President Biden's condition staying in the presidency now until November? Can he make it? Is it safe so for our country? So, Cheryl, you raise a really important point. All the focus from the debate, of course, has been on the election. The reality is, we you know, he has several months yet as the commander in chief, the president, the leader of the free world and the entire free world depends on a projection of strength and leadership from the United States. And and that's not being projected right now. What's interesting is it took the debate performance for everybody to say what everybody's thinking. And a lot of people have been saying it, but now everybody's saying it. And that is that he has significant cognitive decline. To me, on the political front, the Democrats are confronted with a whole bunch of bad options. Really, there's not one option in front of them, including keeping Joe Biden as the president and their nominee. But if they have to make a change, if they should make a change, they should make it soon. They should make it as use the 25th Amendment on behalf of the country, the security of, of, of the United States of America first, and then our standing on this global stage that at a time when the world's on fire, it's not an accident that the world's on fire. It's not an accident Vladimir Putin went into Ukraine under this president or that Xi Jinping is is taking over islands and, and, and imposing Chinese uh, wherever they can. Uh, it's not an accident that 
Houthis are are attacking our our ships or that that Hamas attacked Israel. That that's all a reflection of what we're seeing coming from our own president. Yeah, well, we had uh, Gordon Chang uh, joining us on Monday, and he said, sure. he said, because of what we saw in the debate and the state of Joe Biden's cognitive abilities, that Xi Jinping and China, they could be going for World War III. Maybe they do that uh, before there is a, if, if there's going to be a change in the White House, they would do it before. And that's something that's the top of mind for him. Uh, I do want to ask you yeah. about uh, former President Trump, though. He has still not announced who's going to be his running mate for the election. He has said that he would do it at the convention sometime during the convention. But North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum is on that short list. You were recently yes. with him at a groundbreaking ceremony at Hector <laughs> Airport out in Fargo. Uh, big investment, 200 million to expand gates at that airport. New parking. That's great. How are the conversations with uh, Governor Burgum? Do you think he's <laughs> going to be the nominee? Well, I think he's certainly, you know, obviously we know he's he's on the near the top of the list. I personally believe that he's got a very very strong chance because I just think he he aligns so well with Donald Trump. I think he gives Donald Trump confidence. He has been an incredible surrogate. In fact, I don't know all of the other you know potential vice presidents added up. I don't think have spent as much time on your channel and and the other news channels in the last several weeks, if not months, than Doug Burgum. And nobody's done a better job of of articulating why Donald Trump cho- should be the choice for America. The other thing is they align so well philosophically, Cheryl. They're experienced as business people, building small companies into very large companies, um, providing lots of jobs for people, signing both sides of the paycheck. Um, and, and, and then where they differ a little bit, of course, is in style. Doug is a, a very cerebral guy, goes very deep on issues, um, whereas President Trump you know, keeps it pretty high level because he's communicating to the American and people and to the world, he he's the marketing genius to say the least, and, and his his uh, you know his instincts are so good. Doug will drill down into the very deep details of things, but they're on the same page doing this, and I just think they're they're a great team. So um, you know, I'm rooting obviously for my governor. I think he'd be a great choice, not just for North Dakota but for America. If not, I fully would expect that that um, Doug Doug and Catherine Burgum will be. You know, participating in the administration in some way should Donald Trump win, and let's all hope he does. All right. Well, he definitely got a, a he turned heads. Uh, Doug Burgum did on on Sunday when he was asked if he'd had conversations with former President Trump, and he said that's between myself and former President Trump, and that had everybody thinking, <laughs> okay, Senator yeah. Kevin Kramer, it's great to see you, sir. Thank you for being with us. Have a great, great Fourth of July. You, Right. Thank you, you too. All right. Well, we've got a lot more coming up this morning. We have TV host Mike Rowe in the house. He's going to talk his new Fox special.